Well, joining us this afternoon in studio is the African Diaspora Forum Chairperson, Mr. Mark Buffo. Uh, good afternoon to you, sir. Thank you for joining us here on ANN7. Good afternoon to you and good afternoon to your listeners. Thank you. It's been ongoing, the situation in Zimbabwe. It's been speculation since yesterday on what exactly the situation is. So it's difficult to discuss things that are just speculation. But what is your initial reaction to everything that's transpired in Zimbabwe? Uh, look, uh, from yesterday to today, uh, about uh, 450 Zimbabweans visited our office. Wow. And the general perception is that uh, people are happy about uh, the situation back home. The one thing is that uh, uh, people believe and uh, strongly believe that uh, this will end the suffering of Zimbabweans mm -hmm. in Zimbabwe. And also people are happy in the fact that uh, there, there was no bloodshed in Zimbabwe after this uh, scenario because we know Whenever the army take over in any country, mm -hmm. most of the time, what you see is that civilians are victims yeah. of the situation. And uh, we, 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 we applaud the Zimbabwean army for not touching the civilians mm -hmm. uh, and uh, saying that they're trying to remove criminals. So we are watching the situation very closely. Um, well, we want to also know who are the criminals in, uh, in, uh, in, in Zimbabwe, but uh, we want to say as, as the African Diaspora Forum that uh, for 37 years, uh, one child of that country was in, in, in power and uh, the country became like his farm. And unfortunately, many people of the same country were suffering, were leaving the country because of the ruling of, uh, of that person. Uh, for us, this should be a lesson to all the African leaders who don't want to give up uh, to power. Uh, they want to give up, they don't want to, those who don't want to give up power. Um, unfortunately, our structures like the African Union, the SADC, ECOWAS, will only come back when situation, the situation is worse. We want, we want these structures to remind the leaders of our continent that whenever they finish their term, they should be able, courage is enough, to give the power back to the people mm. who elect them into that same power. Mm. Yeah. Mr. Buffo, interesting uh, statement that you made about 400 Zimbabweans came to, to your offices to, to, to engage with you and your organization on this issue. Just talk us through those sort of conversations and, and what was discussed. Uh, look, uh, normally when uh, you see a head of state leaving power, uh, you'll see that uh, many people will come to say, uh, look, he has been serving the country very well unfortunately is going. People are sad, but uh, this time around is not the same uh, scenario that we see. We see people who are happy. Mm. We see people who are coming there to dance. We, we, we see people who are saying now their suffering will stop. Uh, a very strange uh, scenario that we saw since yesterday. Uh, and uh, and uh, that's why we strongly believe that, uh, yes, Zimbabwe and Zimbabwean were going through uh, a very tough time that, uh, unfortunately, um, we were talking about, we were using the word democracy to play around whenever we want, we want to, uh, to play around with words, but uh, there wasn't any democracy in, in, in Zimbabwe. Um, and that's why we are appealing to the political leaders. If they want to take over, they must make sure that they respect the constitution of that country. Because we agree that uh, the constitution of that country can help the people of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe used to be one of the lights in our continent. Unfortunately, today, Zimbabwe looks like the darkest country in our continent. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Pafa, you speak of these, these Zimbabweans who are excited and happy for possible change, but do you think that change will happen? Apparently, there are very intense uh, closed-door discussions taking place. There's been rumors that the president of Zimbabwe will be stepping down, but do you really think he will, at this point, relinquish that power and actually step down? Uh, look, uh, he has no choice. Uh, President Robert Mugabe has used the army for so many decades to rule. Today the army is asking him to step down. He has to. So mean that this is the end of his reign and he, uh, of his regime and uh, he has to obey to that. Um, the more he'll want to grab on the power, the more damage he'll do to the country. And uh, we all know that uh, Zimbabwe is bleeding. Zimbabwe need something new and uh, we are encouraging the political uh, uh, leaders to bring that hope to, to, to that portion of our continent. That uh, for so many years people were crying, people, people wanted to see the light, which perhaps is there today. And I think uh, the negotiations should be without Robert Mugabe. He should, and, uh, and uh, we, we, we are appealing to South Africa because South Africa is leading the SADC. We are appealing to South Africa to act and to act very, very quickly. Because the more time you take, politicians are positioning themselves, and this might bring even attention. Can perhaps the leader of the SADC? which is South Africa, help uh, uh, the former president to move to South Africa, giving him an asylum, and then smoothly they can solve the issue in Zimbabwe, put into place a process which will then uh, be a process which comes out from mm -hmm. the constitution. But currently, uh, for him being present in, in Zimbabwe doesn't help the situation. Because you don't know, um, his political party got people who uh, perhaps are not very happy about the current situation. People might uh, think about things to do uh, to regain power. If President Robert Mugabe then does step down, who, in your view, or in the Africa Diaspora, for Diaspora Forum's view, should fill that role? I mean, there's been talks around uh, First Lady Grace Mugabe. There's been talks around Emerson and Mugagwa. Who do you think should then replace Robert Mugabe as the president of Zimbabwe? And if that replacement is done, will there be change in the country? Will there be changes in perception of Zimbabwe globally, in your view? Uh, look, uh, uh, that that be a difficult one. And that should be left to the Zimbabwean to decide about who will lead them, mm. should be the choice of the people. Mm. And but, but let's just discuss the options, yeah. the options that are there. The option, the best option is that uh, we have a coalition government where everyone come watch, have something to say, and has something to contribute. Mm. That's the best option. Mm. Uh, you don't want people to be discarded because maybe we feel that uh, they might take over. Uh, you have to include everyone, and I, I think that will be the, be, be the best option for now. Uh, you mentioned the name of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, Grace Mugabe. I mean, I think uh, the latest development to which reached to what we saw yesterday uh, might be herself. So, um, look, I don't want to decide for the Zimbabweans, but I think uh, in your calculations, if you put Grace Mugabe, it might be a bit difficult mm -hmm. uh, for the country to find a durable solution. Mm. Mr. Bafalo, let me just uh, leave it there for now, but stay with us. I want to continue this conversation with you and, and talk a little bit about the perception of Zimbabwe and whether that will change going okay. forward. But we've got uh, further discussions uh, coming through here on uh, ANN7. Joining us now on the phone line to discuss the situation further is Executive Director of the African Center for the Constructive Resolution of Disputes. Vasu Golden joins us on the phone line. Uh, good afternoon to you and thank you for joining us here on ANN7. Just your initial response, reaction to the current situation in Zimbabwe. Good afternoon, Abigail. 
I think, uh, you know, the situation, uh, as I suppose everybody is commenting on, is very fluid right now. Uh, all I can say is that uh, a, a solution should be found fairly quickly because, uh, you know, nature doesn't like a vacuum. And uh, if there is a vacuum, the problem is there may be many more players that uh, might arise and that will complicate the matter. So from a mediation point of view, it is best uh, it's found that the military have stabilized the situation, which could have gotten uh, out of hand uh, if uh, the different forces on either side uh, took to the streets in favor of their supporters. Now, I, we do know that uh, Sadek is meeting at 3 o'clock today, and uh, hopefully they will deliberate on some of uh, possible scenarios and solutions. But in the end, it is uh, up to the Zimbabweans to find a solution. Mm. What is your reaction to President Jacob Zuma's uh, statement that was released yesterday and his decision to send a South African envoy over to Zimbabwe to help uh, neutralize the situation or find some uh, a way forward? Well, as I said uh, yesterday also, President Zuma has two responsibilities. The first as chairperson of SADC, uh, Zimbabwe is a uh, SADC member, and so SADC uh, has to offer its support in order to facilitate uh, the, a solution that avoids uh, any violence uh, or a deterioration of the solution uh, situation. The second uh, responsibility he has is as president of South Africa. South Africa is uh, very closely tied to the fortunes of uh, Zimbabwe. Anything that happens in Zimbabwe will affect South Africa. We have uh, already many Zimbabweans in South Africa, many who make a constructive contribution to our country, but also at the same time uh, puts pressure on our own uh, challenges in South Africa. So if the situation deteriorates and we have uh, an influx uh, into South Africa, it would also present South Africa with increased challenges. And so it is in our interest as a country as well to ensure that uh, whatever solution is found is found speedily uh, in Zimbabwe and assist uh, the transition. So he has that responsibility, and I think it is in that context that he has dispatched uh, the special envoys. For your time this afternoon and sharing your views with us, that was the executive director of the African Center for the Constructive Resolution of Disputes, Mr. Vasu Godin, joining us on the phone line. In studio, though, I'm still joined by Mr. Mark Buffo, African Diaspora Forum chairperson. Uh, Mr. Buffo, let's chat a little bit about the fact that we haven't really had any official statement from Zimbabwe with regards to what exactly is taking place. We haven't heard from the president. We haven't heard from any of his communication ministers. Is there concern around this? Uh, look, uh, um, I believe and uh, the African Diaspora Forum believe that there is a strong discussion between the former president and the army. And uh, they perhaps touching on uh, very uh, serious issues that why is taking too long because mm. uh, we know the army said uh, they didn't do any coup. Uh, we all know that uh, the president is in his house under siege, that all. Uh, uh, and noth nothing comes out. Mean that uh, there is a discussion because mm. the army didn't say, okay, we're taking over of power. They say they want to remove all the criminals around the president. Uh, so, so, so. The discussion that they are having might be a discussion around uh, how he'll hold, uh, hand over power mm. and uh, might be, I mean, uh, we, we, no one can say for now, no one can, can, can say what is happening, mm. but uh, very serious discussion is underway. Mm. That we strongly believe. And talking about discussions, we just heard from the gentleman on the phone line that uh, this SADC meeting is set to take place at 3 p.m. today. Yes. How important is this discussion and what do you think needs to be put on the table here? It is, it is very important. And uh, uh, we want to use this opportunity to thank the president uh, of, of South Africa for quickly acting to send a, a, a delegation to meet the army and uh, perhaps to meet the president, the former president. Uh, 
because if you don't act quickly, then this can lead to other uh, bad development. Mm -hmm. That's what we don't want to see. Uh, and uh, and uh, also because South Africa is playing a key role, currently leading the SADC itself. So the, the meeting, the SADC meeting today will decide because they have to act quickly. People are waiting. People want to know what is happening. Mm -hmm. But uh, internally in Zimbabwe, politicians are also doing their calculations. So SADC has to act very quickly to provide the solutions. Mm. Back to a conversation that we had earlier that was uh, interrupted. This is with regards to perception of Zimbabwe as a country, uh, both on the African continent and, and globally as well. Do you think the happenings over the last couple of days or yesterday into today will have a, a positive impact on that perception? Or how do you think you, you see things turning out here? Look, uh, definitely uh, people will regain uh, confidence to that particular country. That's uh, one very important thing. Uh, I mean, uh, we've been uh, watching uh, this particular country, Zimbabwe, for some years now. All the news that we are getting from that country were not very good news. Mm -hmm. And I think this will give confidence to people who want to go to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. People who want to visit that country. People want to invest there. So I think, I think it, it is a mixture of so much that we will be seeing in that, that particular country as from today. So it, it is definitely for the benefit of the, of the country what happened since yesterday. Mm. Well, we wait to see any further developments, Mr. Bufo. Thank you very much for joining us here on Thank Alien 7 this afternoon. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk about a very important subject on, on our continent. Definitely. It's our pleasure. Thank you for your time, sir. That was Mr. Mark Bufo, the chairperson of the African Diaspora Forum, just chatting to us about the situation in Zimbabwe.